Hello everyone, Diane here, I hope you're all well. I'm in the studio this afternoon and painting against the dark. Um, I decided today, after a great deal of thinking and pondering and changing my mind and you know how it gets sometimes, um, to do a, uh, a sort of wintry, snowy scene based on my, my home where I live. And so I've sort of simplified it all down. And this is my rough sketch here. And I've put one of the little um, buildings that we have here in the distance. And then there's some pine trees. To tell you the truth, they're actually mostly oaks here, but we do have some pines as well. So I've kind of modified these a bit to look like Christmas trees. Then there's our sheep and some hares um, and some chickens. So let's get started. I'm going to do the drawing in pencil. First of all, I'm going to actually draw it bit by bit. And I'm going to take my time because I'm feeling a little bit shaky at the moment, so I'm just going to do it um, slowly. So we'll start with the horizon line. And we're just, uh, we're in an area here where the hills are, are gentle. It's all very gently sloping, nothing dramatic. Um, um, so, I might just actually bring that down a little bit further. Don't be afraid to use the eraser if you feel that you've got your line in the wrong place. And uh, I'm bound to make plenty of mistakes. One of the problems here at the moment with the light is uh, I need to buy some lamps. And to do, I really do. Because we can't use the fluorescent lights in the afternoon because they make uh, what do you call it, um, flickering. And so if I don't do the painting in the morning, I run out of light and the camera can see fine. The, uh, the Apple um, phone that we use to do the recording can see absolutely fine in the dark. In fact, if you take a photograph at night using this phone, you can see, <laughs> you can see things that you didn't even know were there. It's amazing, quite amazing, but you can't see them, so. Anyway, I'm just drawing in a little house. And by the way, if I talk absolute rubbish and you have no idea what I'm going on about, don't take any notice. I'm English, I can't help it. I talk rubbish most of the time. Um, okay, so I'm just dropping in a little house here. I, uh, I have to admit that the style of this painting is not my normal style, although it's been adapted by me. Um, there's a, a, an English artist called Anne Much who Sylvia um, sent me um, a work by and she introduced me to her work. And this is um, somewhat in the style, I would say. It's not a copy by a long chalk because this is my little hen house here in this, in this corner. And I'm just gonna put a Christmas tree in here. But Anne Much is, um, she's a kind of quirky, <coughs> excuse me, um, artist who paints um, little scenes with animals and things. Very, um, the word for that kind of painting is naive. <coughs> excuse me, which isn't meant to be an insult. Okay, so we've got some fencing around our property. That's our fencing. This is an homage to Graham, who put the fencing up for us. Lovely oak fences. And... Uh, they will be standing long after he isn't. Or me, come to that. Hopefully. Terms in says. <laughs> Put some more uh, pines in the background here. Just behind the, the barn. And uh, all the barns here, well, the small ones, the old ones, are all stone, built of solid stone, so. Uh, that's nice. And we put a little chimney on here because often here where we live, the barns used to be houses. Um, so they've often got chimneys, chimney pots. It's not quite that. Right. And that's actually not in the right place. Hang on. Bear with me. That should be at the end. Yeah, people used to live in these buildings and now they, they don't. 
Okay, um, right, so I'm going to put uh, a few of our sheep. I'm not happy with this horizon line, that's not right. It should go much more low like that. That's it. Because as I said, it's not a hilly area, we'll put the sky in there. Okay, so one sheep starting off and um, we have um, a flock of Jacob's sheep of uh, our own breeding here, which is nice. And they have horns. And I'm doing this in pencil and then I'm not going to rub the pencil out. I'm going to paint over the top of it because it will give it a nice texture. Mm -hmm. That ear is too big. I'm going to pretend it's snowed and we're going to have all of these sheep going to be standing in the snow. So the best way to do the head of a sheep is to just do like a link of three sausages like that, one for the top of the head and one for each ear. And then if they've got horns, you just pop the horns in there like that. And then their body kind of comes from the, the top there between the ear and the top of the head and you just bring that round. And you can sort of let the sheep grow with your pencil. They do tend to have long, narrow faces, don't they? And then their legs are kind of thin and spindly. The eyes are well back in the head, quite high. And we'll have a third one here. One sausage, two sausages, three sausages. And then we'll just do the head. And sometimes it helps to sort of imagine you've got a kind of oval in the front there, see? The front half of the sheep is like that, and then a bit of a cylinder going backwards. This time last year, all our sheep were um, expecting lambs, but we don't have a ram anymore. So we won't have any more lambs, which is probably just as well because we have, haven't got very much land and we're just about at our limit. Okay, so there's the three sheep standing on the ground. One, two, three, like that. They tend to line up. We just noticed that today. We're taking some photos and they just kind of go into lines. It's quite funny. Not what we're waiting for. And then over here, I'm going to put some hares or rabbits. It's 
to make sure they're smaller. That's one, and we have this one going this way with his head. And then we'll have one down. But they could be rabbits. Did I say they could be rabbits? The hairs are rabbits, so it doesn't matter. Probably more likely to be rabbits if there's three of them. And then over here, I'm going to put three of our red hens which are being absolutely, completely useless at the moment. We haven't had an egg in a month. Now, if you want the sketch to this, um, it will be available on our website for free, dianantom.com. Just pop over there, have a look, have a look round. Maybe buy yourself one of our mugs with one of our designs on. We've got three to choose from, I think. But for free, you can download uh, these sketches. We also have some collections of sketches too. Um, the, the, we have a collection of birds and a collection of flowers and various things. So go and have a look. They're great fun to download and trace and paint because the drawing, as you can see, takes quite a long time, doesn't it? Right, so then I'm going to pop in here a little bit of vegetation and a few grasses over this side, which will mostly be done with the paint. And then I thought perhaps we could say, oh, this is, it's, um, what's the word? Dusk and there's a, a crescent moon going down or coming up over the horizon there. Something like that. Okay, so now we need to paint them. I'm just checking the camera to make sure I've still got light on the picture here. And I think there it is. You have to bear with me on this one because it could turn out to be, well, we'll see. Um, right, so I'm going to do the sky in cobalt blue. And I'm just going wet into dry. And this paper, by the way, is uh, Clairefontaine Etival, which is 100% cellulose, uh, well-sized paper which is to say sizing doesn't have anything to do with the fact that it's um, A4 or 8.5 by 11. Sizing means it has got a, a, a substance in it like glue, really, which stops the paint from sinking in too badly and enables you to, to wash the paint off if you make a mistake and to move it around a little bit, whilst at the same time allowing you to do nice bleeds and wet in wet. So it's a good paper, Etival it's called, there's a link on our website um, as to where to buy it. You can get packs of 50 on Amazon and um, uh, that's a pretty good value for money. I think it's about $35 for 50 sheets of basically letter sized paper. I'm not going to mess around with the sky, I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'm going to paint the moon in um, Naples yellow. And if it bleeds, that's fine because it will just be like a glow. So I might even paint over the lines a little bit and let it glow a bit like the moon tends to. And I might just drop a little bit of Naples yellow. I, I quite like Naples yellow on the horizon because often it just warms it up a little bit. So. And then I've got olive green, 
And Olive is going to paint some pine trees and we're not going to worry about them running because we really actually want them to. So we just do those kind of roughly in different shades of green, different heights, however they go, doesn't matter. Maybe this one will do it darker because it's just behind the house. But just any old how really. And then I'm going to paint the roof in the sort of slate blue colour that they actually are. I'll put a little bit of brown near the top and the chimney as well. I'll just do that in brown because we need it to stand out a little bit um, from the blue of the sky. So then the, the stony uh, structure of the building is a sort of light beigey brown. We'll just pop a little bit of shadow in there to give it a bit more dimension. And then I've got a window there, which is nice and dark. Very small windows we have in these houses here. And that's a door. And then just put a piece of wood over the top of the door. Hold the door up. Okay, and then perhaps we'll put some, the tiles are, sorry, the roofs are usually slate tiles. So they're always gray like that. And they're always falling off too. Okay, now I'm gonna pretend that it's been snowing and I'll come back and put some snow on those pine trees later. But so I'm just gonna pop a pine in here, another one. I'm not going to paint the land, the ground behind, because I'm gonna pretend it's covered in snow. And I'm going to paint now the fence. You can call that a gate if you like. There we are. And uh, maybe at this point we could put just a little bit of blue on the ground there. Very light blue to show a few shadows in the snow. Okay, do you know what, I can hardly see. So God knows what this is gonna look like by the time it's finished. But, you know, if I could look at the camera, I'd be perfect. No problem at all, the camera can see fine, like I said before. I'm saying this because Tamsin's sitting beside me and I know she's thinking to herself, oh, for God's sake, mother, shut up, stop moaning. No, she wouldn't say a thing like that. <laughs> she's just giving me the evil eye. No, but it's true. It is true. Here we go. We've got the ears now. Und, and, und. Was? Ich spreche Deutsch. Und die Ohren. Und die, oh, was ist das denn? <laughs> das Gesicht. <laughs> Sylvia, das ist für dich. Horns. ears and face. Okay, now this is a very subtle little painting, isn't it? I hope nobody thinks, oh, that's really dull. Oh, it's not very bright. Well, just look at the, the robins then. <laughs> Naples yellow for the shadow on the sheep. and a little bit of blue, cobalt blue as well, which blended with Naples yellow doesn't go green, it goes gray. So the sheep doesn't, doesn't go very green. And then back to sepia brown for the legs. 
And I'm going to keep these very simple because if I don't, I'm going to run out of time and I'll put the legs on top of the chickens or something daft. Okay. I'm just going to lift out a little bit of the dark in the center. Not much, just a kind of hint because my sheep would complain if I painted them like black faced Lester's. They would say, we're Jacob's mother. We used to have a dog called Jacob and we called him, I called him Jacob because when we got him, he was a puppy, Kisond, and he looked like, guess what? A Jacob's sheep. He, well, he didn't really, but he did a bit. Put some eyes in. Nose. I might have to do a little bit of correcting of this um, before we put the video up, just because I'll have to turn the lights on. I'm going to be the only YouTuber who ever painted her paintings in the dark. I'm going to be famous. It'll be called Painting in the Dark with Diane. Do you think it might catch on? Uh, this is Burnt Sienna. for the chickens, the eggless chickens. I'm gonna to have to have a word with these birds. Yeah. Hello bird. That was a bird flying into the window. Uh, what color are their legs, Tamsin? I can never remember what color the legs of a chicken are. Yellow, right, okay. Put in their combs and their wattles in red. I remember a few years ago, I'd never painted a chicken, and I used to say to people, oh, they're so darn difficult, I can't, I know, I'd start with a chicken. Um, but actually, once you've painted one or two, as I think it's, what's her name, Karen? No, not Karen Rice, no, Karen Simmons, um, an old painter from England. She's the one, she says, oh, they're really easy, actually. I'm like, okay, take your word for it, I'll give it a go. And then, you know, you do, you don't ever live back, look back, do you? Okay, there's the three red hens. And then finally, over here, we've got the hairs. And we're gonna do them in a sort of bluish gray. So cobalt blue and burnt sienna and because they're sort of greyish and they're in profile pretty much. I'm not going to bother about any uh, details on these. I won't bother to say it again. It's because I can't see. <laughs> but that's okay. We sort you out later, rabbit. But you've got the idea. I'm quite sure what went wrong there. ear out. He doesn't want the three ears, does he? But you can see that you can actually correct on this paper. Some papers that don't like that having, having that done to them. Okay, so we're getting towards the end now. So I'm going to pick up some very pale um, cobalt blue 
and just put the shadows of the sheep in fairly randomly underneath them and then the shadows of the rabbits similarly and then the shadows of the chickens and then I'm going to grab I think I'm going to go for the rigger I think and let's let's do some brown gray gray brown twiglets Oh, do you remember Twiglets, Tamsin? Marmite. Yeah. Uh. Just a few bits and pieces there. And on the other side, we might, I don't know whether to go for a greenish kind of thing. I don't, I don't know, we've got, got a bit of green there, so we probably could. A few kind of bits of grass on this side. And just because it's Christmas, just pick up some cadmium red and we'll put a few berries on here for the birds, which are going to be flying in from overseas in a minute. Let's put some birds in the sky, won't we? over here. That sheep needs a bit more shadow. He looks as if he's, she looks as if she's standing in midair. Okay, now I'm not even going to try to do anything with um, a brush. I'm going to get my point one Pen and uh, let's put in some some Canadian geese flying in from Vancouver because all the roads are down. Isn't that terrible? I just heard on the on the internet that all Vancouver is cut off. Now shut up, all you Albertans! You're not allowed to laugh. Cut off by oh my God, climate change. So. Having got to this point, if you want to give your thing a bit more structure, you can come in with a pen and add some sharpening up lines, or you can leave it as you as you find it. And I might do that when I can turn the lights on, but I'll leave that for the minute. And there was something I was going to do to that tree, wasn't there? Oh, I was going to put a bit of snow on it, wasn't I? That's right. Um, so I need some white ink or white gouache. Gouache. White gouache. Gouache. It's French. Gouache. Hello, Russell. Russell says, oui. Ça s'appelle gouache, maman. Oui. C'est pas gouache. That's the way my husband talks French. Actually, he's very good. He's uh, not a native English speaker, so he doesn't care if he makes stupid mistakes when he's in France or Spain. It's all the same to him. <laughs> there we go. There's some snow on the trees, and we put a little bit of snow on the top of the roof. Put a little bit of snow on the fence. I could get quite carried away by doing this. You want to put lots more snow on there. Shall I put some snow on the chicken or on the sheep? Sometimes when they wake up in the morning, they've got sheep, they've got um, snow on them. Poor things. Right then, so there we are. That's done. Alhamdulillah. Um, perhaps a little bit of snow in the sky. Should we put a few bits of spatter in? There we go. It's snowing. It's Christmas. So there is the final painting, with the exception of the fact that when I turned the lights on, I need to just improve some of the eyes and ears and noses of the sheep, which I can't see right now. 
and I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, I didn't, I forgot to mention this. I put a piece of tape across there for the top of the painting so that when I'm done, I can fold it in half like this one and it becomes a card. Some rubbish on the inside of that one. There we are. So I'll see you over at dianenton.com and if not, I'll see you here tomorrow. So have a lovely evening, everyone. Bye for now. Bye bye.